Alabama State nickname, you ask? It's the Yellow Hammer State. It's weird, I know. It's also weird I know that. Alabama did something significant in mid-May. The Republican-controlled state legislature passed the most restrictive abortion ban in the country. Now, the legislation effectively outlaws abortion in all cases but one, when the life of the mother is in danger. And it comes on the heels of a series of laws passed by Republican legislatures across the country, from Georgia to Ohio to Texas to Louisiana, that seek to chip away at the 1973 Supreme Court ruling in Roe v. Wade that made abortion legal. It um, uses that that child is a person and that's the decision that it was based on. And I truly believe in my heart that we can't get a heartbeat bill until we get Roe versus Wade revisited and turned over. And that is what really is important to understand here. Yes, Alabama Republican lawmakers wanted to be on record passing a law that would make it nearly impossible to get an abortion in their state. Hmm. But they also knew that the law they passed would immediately be challenged and likely would never, at least not anytime soon, go into effect since it runs directly counter to the federal ruling that prohibits undue burdens being placed on women seeking to terminate a pregnancy before viability. What the Alabama Republicans are doing then is part of a broader strategy aimed at pushing the issue of abortion through a variety of state laws in front of a Supreme Court that they now believe might undo Roe v. Wade. Now, just in the last few months, we've seen Ohio and Georgia pass so-called fetal heartbeat laws. What those do is ban women, with some exceptions, from seeking an abortion as soon as a fetal heartbeat is detected. Now that time varies, although it can be as early as the sixth week of a pregnancy, when some women may not even know that they're actually pregnant. Then there is the Louisiana law. This was passed back in 2014 and says that doctors performing an abortion must have admitting privileges at a hospital within 30 miles of where that procedure is being conducted. Now, abortion rights advocates insist and insisted at the time that the law effectively banned abortion for many women, noting that there was only a single doctor at a single clinic in the city of New Orleans who could perform the procedure under the state law. The Supreme Court is poised in upcoming months to consider hearing a possible challenge to that very law. And a ruling on the matter could come down in the summer of 2020, which, yes, would be right in the middle of the presidential campaign. Now, it's worth noting that the Supreme Court did reject a Texas law that was very similar to the Louisiana one back in 2016 by a vote of five to three. But, and this is the really most important takeaway, that court was very different from this court. For starters, back then there were only eight members. You know, five, three, it, it's eight. Now why? Well, because Senate Republicans refused to meet with or hold confirmation hearings for then President Barack Obama's nominee, Merrick Garland, citing the fact that it was too close to a presidential election for the outgoing President Obama to make such a consequential pick. Now, when that ninth spot on the court was eventually filled, it was by Neil Gorsuch, a conservative selected by newly elected president, Donald Trump. Now, the other big difference between the 2016 court and today's court, swing vote Anthony Kennedy has been traded out for conservative Brett Kavanaugh, who has had a tough time clarifying exactly what his position is when pressed on the abortion issue. Can you think of any laws that give government the power to make decisions about uh, the male body? Uh, I'm happy to answer a uh, more specific question. But. Kavanaugh's successful confirmation to the court now means there are five conservative justices and four liberal justices. And the new court's makeup has many legal experts convinced that the next time a serious challenge to Roe is heard, the law will be struck down. Quote, Anthony Kennedy is retiring. Abortion will be illegal in 20 states in 18 months. Hashtag SCOTUS predicted CNN legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin way back in June 2018. And Trump, for his part, has been very transparent about his desire to see Roe overturned. Witness this exchange with Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace in the late stages of the 2016 presidential campaign. Do you want to see the court overturn Roe Well, if we put another two or perhaps three justices on, that's really what's going to be, ha that will happen. And that'll happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. 
That line, put another two or perhaps three justices on, is of course exactly what Trump has done in the two plus years he's been president. But there's reason to believe that predictions of the end of Roe may be somewhat overstated. Chief Justice John Roberts, who was appointed to the court by Republican President George W. Bush, has repeatedly emphasized his concern about the court breaking with past precedents, which would seemingly include the Roe v. Wade decision. Quote, it is a jolt to the legal system when you overrule a precedent, Roberts told then-Senator Arlen Specter at his 2005 confirmation hearing, adding, quote, precedent plays an important role in promoting stability and even handedness. Now, Roberts seemed to stick by that view in a February 2019 ruling in which he sided with the four liberal justices to block that aforementioned Louisiana law. And even Brett Kavanaugh deferred to President when asked about Roe during his own confirmation hearing. Quote, as a general proposition, I understand the importance of the precedent set forth in Roe v. Wade, he said. Now, sidebar, Kevin also wrote a 2003 memo in which he said the Supreme Court, quote, can always overrule, end quote, Roe. So it's unclear how we would vote in the case of a serious challenge to Roe. Okay, so what do we make of all of this? Two things. One, there's no doubt that legislation like the abortion ban in Alabama is aimed at the larger goal of prohibiting abortions nationwide. Point two. The Supreme Court has been mysterious enough on the issue to make it very difficult to predict with certainty how it might rule and when on these sorts of challenges to row. And that is the point. We make New Point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.